paint is a paint is a paint until it's more than a paint like our war paints range. Our war paints feature some of the most heavily pigmented soft body acrylic paints in the hobby industry. And in this video today, we're gonna to show you how to use these paints, give you some of the best practices and tips and help you to paint even better. All paints are made with a combination of pigments, binders, and a solvent. Pigment is what gives paint its color and hiding properties, or gives paint its opaqueness. Paints can be made using one pigment or a blend of pigments to achieve the desired color. A binder is what gives the paint its binding effect. These are usually acrylic resin based and give pigments their adhesive properties when applying them. This is why we call our war paints, war paints acrylics. When you combine the heavy pigments and binder, which are solids with a solvent, a liquid, you have paint. High quality paints like our war paints generally have a higher solid and pigment content to liquid ratio. The more pigments by volume a paint has, the more paint will remain on the surface of your miniature after the liquids have evaporated. All acrylic paints require appropriate mixing, especially heavily pigmented paints like our war paints. The heavier the pigmentation, the more likely they are to settle and separate from the solvent. We'll illustrate this with a bit of sand and some water. If the sand is to sit for a period of time, it will eventually settle at the bottom of the bottle. In order to blend the ingredients, you must agitate them. You can do this by simply giving the bottle a good shake before each use. With a new bottle of war paint, we recommend squeezing out the added medium at the top. I like to call this the ketchup water. Simply pour out a couple drops of the medium, screw on the lid, shake, and you're ready to paint. To make mixing even easier, apply one or two of our rust-proof mixing balls into the bottle. Apply a drop of your chosen war paint to your wet palette and mix the paint with your brush to achieve a desired consistency. For base coating, we like the consistency of heavy cream. Be careful at this point to not get any paint in the ferrule of your brush to prevent fraying, as the paint dries in the ferrule can seriously damage the point of the brush. Begin by applying a single coat over the most hard to reach areas on the model. It's always best to apply our colors in thin coats so as not to obscure any of the details on the model. If necessary, apply a second thin coat. Not all pigments are created equal. For example, yellows, some reds, oranges, and greens are considered weak pigments. These colors innately have more opacity due to the natural makeup of the pigments inside. Don't worry though, you can achieve consistent coverage by simply applying another thin coat. Once you've base coated your model with our war paints, it's time to apply some shadow and shading to your model. For that, you can use either our original quick shade dip or our acrylic quick shade washes. We're gonna discover a little bit more about those two products in the next step in this how-to series. Stay tuned. 